the Story Club 4, where we take things very seriously. Uh, we've got another match coming up from Group... Uh, I think it's uh, F right now. Sounds uh, good group to me. Group G, anyway, e, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Um, Maybe Road Dungeons beat Tice, so that was a pretty big upset. Yeah, big upset. A lot of people didn't really expect it. I was talking to a lot of people downstairs, and they were like, yeah, it's 90-10 against Frodan. Yeah, that's pretty I crazy. told them they were they're out of their mind. So but but, what you're telling me is that the 2,000 bucks I put on Frodan are going to be very fruitful. That, yeah, yeah, very good. I like that. Very good. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, Gara, we're going to have a, a little bit <laughs> conversation like that about that face. How do you feel about your teammate? Everyone who puts, who bets money on Frodan is pretty happy right now. Sure. Yeah. 90 to 10 odds? Yeah. Legit. Feels good, man. Yeah. I don't even know if anybody did. They might have put one dollar to laugh, and they're like, "Why didn't I put more?" Like, anyone that knows Hearthstone yeah. knows that there's no ninety to ten odds. Like, no, they, like that just doesn't happen in a Hearthstone series. Really, it depend like no matter who's playing. Yeah. And, like, if anyone puts in the time and works hard, they can increase their odds a little bit. But at worst, it's like seventy thirty. Yeah. So what Firebat is saying is, if uh, if you're into Hearthstone, you know, esports betting, yeah. then you should always look at the expected value of a player. And make sure that if it's over the 30% expected win rate, yeah. you just, like, bet. Yeah. Pretty you cool. probably make a career out of that or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Better. Oh, no, that is so bad. Best, best example was the Skarkas games. Like, how close yeah, it was that to was actually insane. losing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anything can happen, man. And we might see it here today. All right. Uh, so we have... Uh, wait, who's playing? Alish? Uh, no, there's Super JJ versus Show. All right. Sorry, yeah. I don't even see on the screen. So it was Super JJ versus Show. Yeah. Um, Show is on Liquid. We haven't seen much of him in tournaments of recent memory. They uh, are ex-teammates. Show used to be on Complexity, on complexity with yeah. Super JJ. Show on the Control Warrior, Super JJ on the Midrange Hunter. Looks like he's running double freezing trap in his deck. Gonna mulligan those away, but keeping on to the Shredder. That's a pretty good replacement for the traps. Uh, yeah, they like they're go. pretty much top notch. I think that's a pretty. What do you think, Firebird? It's a pretty greedy mulligan. Keep Shredder. Yeah, you yeah, go yeah. first. Shredder is pretty it's, it's very greedy, but. You it, need a two drop. You definitely need a two drop in that early pressure, but if you can get the early pressure and still have the Shredder, it's best case. Feels good, man. Feels yeah. good, man. It's pretty nice to see Show going back to the control warrior roots. Mm -hmm. um, he used to be pretty much like. When Kit Kat stopped warrioring, uh, Show took on the, main, the mantle of the control warrior for a while. But yeah, he was a warrior god. Yeah, he was the second in, in the line of warrior gods after Kit Kats. Would you still consider him a warrior god? I think uh, these days I would have to say that maybe, I would say Stan Sifka, is that wrong? Maybe Life Coach is like the warrior god of our okay. era. Okay. And what does Med make, what does that make show? Is he like a warrior demigod or like... No, he's more like uh, a... warrior saint? No, not even... A warrior Buddha? I like the warrior, the, the warrior saint. Uh, warrior yeah. saint, okay. Yeah. The shrine of show. The shrine of show warriors. Yeah. Okay. We just okay. go to Jaina. To China. They have multiple gods there. All right. It's, it's like out. legit to have multiple gods. So. And it's normal, right? It's kind yeah. of okay. So it sure. doesn't really look to have multiple, multiple uh, gods. He's got a lot of work cut out for him right now because that is a sick curve from Super JJ. Yeah, but uh, one thing to say as well is that the Warriors got the ghoul, and that's a really big deal in this matchup. But if he just drops it down now, if there is no owl, that's it. Like, you yeah. have to lose everything to this one ghoul. Yeah, that's really painful. That tech really coming in handy, Control Warrior tech. Pretty much designed for, like, this matchup in Paladin. Right. Yeah. The, but there are two matchups against which it's very solid. It's always been like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like nowadays, uh, with the amount of them on the ladder, like, play, playing Control Warrior, uh, if you've got a really deep wallet, it's definitely worth it. Sure, yeah. The, the legendaries are expensive. Yeah, they can get really pricey. Like, that Golden Grom right here. Oh, man. Yeah. But it looks so good. I know, right? He's got like red eyes and stuff. Red eyes. He looks angry. Yeah. I think they're all just okay. really stoned. <laughs> really stoned. <laughs> so, so dank, man. I also like the Altec. Yeah, it was actually pretty crazy. You don't it's, see it very often yeah. in Warrior. It's like, so, really, really rarely. So defensive. Like, it's really tuned to be aggro. And probably doesn't stand very good against control, though. Because of all these things, like the Ghoul, like the Owl. These tech choices are only good against aggressive decks and are going to be really bad against control decks. But that's one of the things you can do in this format, is you can make a deck to try and counter specific classes and specific deck archetypes, and then queue it only into the aggressive decks, and then hold it back when the uh, control decks are up. Yeah. So, interesting here that he chose to uh, play the Lothab. Um, oh, I like but, it. Yeah, I mean, it, he knows that the Owl will get, like, uh, bounced back, mm -hmm. but that means he doesn't he doesn't really care that the Owl ever silences again. But this is the type of tech card that you should 
Nokia, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is uh, the type of card that you're happy to get back in your hand if you're show because it's super cheap. Yeah, but like, what do you, as Super JJ, you expect your opponent's going to be, it's turn five, they're going to play Belcher. Right. And, and uh, Lothab really contests Belcher, whereas, like, yeah, playing the other two cards, now you have no answer to Belcher. So then yeah. you're forced to sit there, sit on the freezing trap, and then play Lothab the following turn off curve. It just feels like. Yeah, obviously, like the Lothab like, was sloppy. the better play. Uh, yep. Like ideally, that's what you want to you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but without a high main follow up, like Joe can basically two. sit on this for a long time. Uh, sure. And probably not worry too much. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely like Show's position a little bit better than Super JJ's, just because he's got so much more fuel, and we see dead cards basically in Super JJ's hand, like his Haunted Creeper and this Juggler that are just like not really going to impact the game as much as possibly other things. Warrior became so much harder, also with Justica. Oh, yeah. And, also, and when you take Owl and stuff, I feel like this matchup is close to unwinnable. Yeah. It's so yeah. much here. Justica true hard really locked. Like, cause the thing is, if, if it comes down at any point, literally any point, after that point, you have to have the board or you've lost. Yeah. Like, you have to have either a crazy amount of card advantage or the board already established. Pretty so. much, yeah. And uh, Super JJ's board is not looking so super here. Oh, it's got a super low thumb. <laughs> a super low thumb? Yeah. I mean, the low it costs thumb. five, it has five attacks, it's got five health. It's like the trinity of the fives. It's pretty super. Yeah, that's super. Yeah, super five. All right. Yeah. Well, he drew a Lepernome, and that's not quite so super. It's really not going to help contest the board at all. I guess maybe he could uh, try and establish a board and then play the Freezing Trap, and then kind of just sit around and then try and kill the Belcher and the Slime in one go, so the Freezing Trap always kind of has Yeah, well, you're playing sort of it to Brawl really hard, though. Like, as soon as the Warrior picks it up, it's like, it, yeah. that's the problem. You want to extend just to but, sit on that Lotha sure. and see where it goes, but you're running it like, into the problem of never being able to do anything. Yeah, but can you, can you really justify playing around Brawl? Like, sometimes no. your hand is, like, too weak that you have to find ways to take risks to make it better. Yeah. And so, like, where is the risk going to be? Because you're obviously, when your opponent has a stronger hand, you got to try and figure out how you can exploit the advantages of yours somehow. Yeah. And risking Brawl seems to be the choice he's taken. Pretty super. It's getting worse and worse because now he's going to shield block, shield slam the Lord tap, protect the Belcher, and develop the armor smith, and that's pretty GG. Pretty super GG! Super GG! That's pretty much it. Nah, I, don't know, I don't know what he needs to come back. Um, Nothing, like Dr. Uh, Boom, High Man. You have uh, to have High Man into High Man into Boom. Like literally. Silence. Yeah, 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 that seems good. That's yeah, the only there's a possibility here still. That's Abusive not the high value. You know? <laughs> that is that is not a high value card. And really, what you're looking for is high value cards, because now he's going to float so much mana since he just didn't get a card that he could use to expend all of it. And that that feels bad, man. And you're giving armor. If this Belcher, whoa, oh, there we go. That's a start. It, yeah, his board kind of contested a little bit, and if we look back at Show's hand, he doesn't have. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. He does have it. I don't even know what you do here. If you're the hunter, everything's gone wrong since the beginning. Like the only thing that could make this worse is if you slapped on a few whirlwinds. Yeah, that would make it a lot worse. But there, we're gonna do it with Deathbite right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Live from Seed Story Cup. Yeah. Yeah. The unwinnable. I mean, it feels like Control Warrior is back in a great spot, which it yeah. wasn't for a long time. Like Control Warrior was. I mean, it's always been it's always been good, um, mm -hmm. but the dominance that it's got now really reminds me of like a long time ago yeah. when it was the deck to play for uh -huh. competitive purposes. Well, we see like everyone wants to bring Freeze Mage. We've seen that like very popularly throughout the tournament, so that's a great place for Control Warrior to start. Then a lot of people have been playing Rogue now since the yeah. World Championships, and a lot of people had some success with Rogue. And uh, Control Warrior dominates that matchup. So just so much room for Control Warrior play to be out there. And it's one of those decks, too, that uh, doesn't have any, like, super terrible matchups. Like, even against Druid, it can sneak it's some like, wins yeah, out. Yeah. I remember, like, it, it used to be said that Control Warrior was basically 55% against the entire field. But oh, now wow. I think it's, like, possibly, like, like 55 against everything. Okay. But if you're with Justicar Truhart, I think that polarized a lot of the matchups. Sure. To where if you do, like, an average, it's possibly even, like, higher than that. If played by a great player and great teched player. properly, of course. Yeah. We see a lot of tech here, and... Uh, with the Iron Beak Owl, the Unstable Ghoul. Show really trying to pinpoint Hunter and yeah. Paladin, yeah. And he's able to hit that matchup here, so that's going to be some pretty good success for the Warrior. It's going to be interesting, though, coming up, though. Super JJ has the ability to counter with the Druid. And oh, those I, tech choices are going to be really bad I, against I, I Druid. I think that he's actually playing mid-range Paladin. Okay. Okay. okay, so yeah. you think he counters with that? Yeah, he has Quartermasters. Okay. Sure. That sure. is pretty good yeah. against Control Warrior. It's not Patron. So how do you think the tech choices are really going to help him there, then? 
like well, in the owl. Uh, it's pretty good. I yeah. think owl is yeah. good in a lot of matchups. Even against druid, it's pretty good sometimes. Even against druid, you think owl is worth playing? Shredder yeah. with owl. I just not, just not the the mirror and others for control decks. But there's not too many so control decks to be honest. I don't know, man. I don't think owl is good against druid. See, what are you silencing? Handlock pretty good. Against handlock, it's boom okay. bots. The boom bot that would you, kill you. You silence like boom bots or Sylvanas or like yeah, like Sylvanas sometimes. But Shredder. Like, you have Warlix, Owl, and kill. Like, yeah. you, you basically kill a 2 free with an Owl. You can also silence the Aspirant, so you got like a lot of good targets. Um, I like it. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess we might see that come out, but... Yeah. Super but JJ. honestly, like, the, the lineup from JJ is like the most standard thing ever. You've got Druid, Paladin, um, with the, the Hunter. Like This yeah. is kind of the power lineup right now, if you think about any lineup. Okay. That's pretty much what you see, those three classes. And then you okay. see Tempo Mage being sprinkled in. Mm -hmm. um, but. Cho's lineup is pretty much perfect against that. I mean, his warrior at least. Yeah, it does look like he's going to pull out the mid-range paladin. Gar was right. Sh um, Super JJ, pretty known for mid-range paladin. I actually casted him in a tournament a while ago, some like UK tournament, and he was rocking the mid-range paladin there. Okay. So it makes some sense that he keeps it going. I just see a very good suggestion from the from the chat. You can silence taunt and go face. Yes, <laughs> there you go. You nah. can give them mana crystals, you can sunstone, go fit. Yeah, a lot of things to do. Okay, it's a value game. You guys are wrong. We're moving on. All right. Oh, man. Firebat with the shots. <laughs> Literally. Uh, no, it's okay. Too many shots, Firebat. I was just playing. Forgive me, Twitch chat. Stop playing. All right. So we're serious the, mode the here. X, X, World Champion has talked. All right. We have the War X, which so, feels all right against Paladin. can clean up things like Knife Juggler, or with the Armor Smith, you can kill even would Shielded you, Minibot. But would you keep uh, True Silver nowadays? You kept it in the past. Uh, That's yeah, a I good question. With the Aspirant, though, it's. Because I mean, uh, like. There's the, a lot of early game you can get. There's no Aspirant, and it's a Paladin. Uh, no, but I mean, like, in general, you would never. Like, I don't really see how True Silver Champion would ever really be something you'd keep in, like, in Paladin against much anything nowadays. Like, like you'd never get to that turn. Priest, maybe. Maybe Priest. Jerry, against, against all the slow decks, I kind of like True Silver. Yeah. It's really wow, quality's there. All right. Already start. Yeah, quality's a sick card, but not going to come out till a lot later because you really need to make sure you have answers to the big threats. Namely, Ysera. That's one that right. Control Warrior can really use to, to punish you if you don't have an answer to it. And Equality's one of the only answers in the game. I mean, like, Owl kind of answers it, but it's still a 412, which yeah. is a pain in the ass. Wait, I said Aspirant. No wonder you were confused. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, I meant a mini bot. Like the oh, two drop. Okay. Like, wh why would you keep True Silver over like trying to get to fetch those early game cards? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mulligan for the Aspirant. I was like, Axis, what are you oh, talking no. about? <laughs> oh my God. Yes, that's right. All right, good save. We made it. We're good here. Save. We're on I the was, same page. I was confused why you were confused, but now, now, now I understand. Oh yeah, so. we figured it out. Yeah. All that's right. It's a mini bot. It's a, it's a good card. It's a good card. Better than Aspirant, I think, most of the time. <laughs> In Paladin, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Sleep. How do you feel about this knife juggler? Or do you think you maybe just hero power, try and bait some weapon swings? Um, does it? I mean, it's better than hero power, isn't it? It can test. Cruel Taskmaster would... Yeah, Cruel Taskmaster yeah. would be a bummer. But do you yeah, even think your opponent's running Cruel Taskmaster since you you've really seen want Unstable? To get, I think you really want to get good cook hammer value. Yeah, and by yeah, playing two minions, you're, it, you're yeah. keeping at least one, right? By playing the second minion, you're always going to have a cog hammer value, like 100% of the time. In and in this case, you can even attack first, right? Yeah. So you're forcing the warrior to a really clunky spot yeah. with that weapon. Yeah. Yeah, I like that line. I like, Ooh. oh, he's going to do it this way. Well, I guess he's just going to attack with the weapon. Sure, sure. Doesn't Why not, matter. right? I, I guess you got to use all the weapon charges anyway. Paladin's got such a diverse lineup of weapons now. Yeah. It makes some sense. But we were saying you could have like traded the minibot in, then divine Keep the charge in case yeah. he wants it. Um, but if he's playing mid range, he's probably got two true starters to stop it off, so he's going to have like way too many. Easiest sure. slam off his left. Yeah, easiest slam ever. Easiest armor smith ever. Easiest armor smith. Easiest life ever. ever. Of his life. His life is easy. Hey, life seems I. Right. Yeah. You just piggyback in on John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets that. That was an inside joke. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, so now I'm laughing. I want to no see fail fish. Why? <laughs> like, like, I think that's hilarious, but no one else <laughs> understands it. All right, so from now on, every minute in this game is John Cena. All right, good. We have to make this happen. No, you can't just, we can't leave Twitch chat it out of the inside joke. It absolutely works. It's All right, okay. get back to the game. You need to stay focused. He, he missed his four drops. Super just... JJ's forced the hero power. That's true. 
of his life. Garo <laughs> 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 with the quality calls. Oh my god, this cast has evolved into nothing but a clown fiesta, guys, right, and we don't even five. apologize. Dr. Right. Five. Oh my god. All right, now he's got a Belcher, but it's not as easy as his opponent's Belcher because he's he's behind on board already. He's missed his four. What else would you play? Yeah, I mean, he has to do it, but it he's not happy. It is the easiest Belcher, then. I guess it's easy. No, he's thinking about Aldor. It's not easy. He okay. has decisions here. Actually, he does. He's got, like, Aldor and Hero Power. Hero Power. Yeah, try and set up for a quarter, maybe. Uh, yeah, I could see that. Because okay. like the, there's a chance that the, the, the war just goes and uses the um, the Belcher. But the question is, like, how do you deal with the Belcher on the following turn? You'd have to use Weapon plus yeah. the Aldor. I, I really don't like the Aldor yeah. here. I, re I really think you need to save it for big stuff. Easiest like Warrior. Belcher of his life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Gara? If I hear anything else than like easiest X card of his life for the rest of this cast, I'm going to be angry. So you just need to make those calls when we get yeah. sidetracked. It's, it's got to be a Belcher. Yeah. Yeah. Easiest yeah. Belcher. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Isera, all, right. all right, that's a lot of uh, a lot of value there. The equality is going to come in super handy because the game should be lasting that long at the very yeah. least. The spot of his life. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. So the, from the Paladin's perspective, he, the Paladin actually has all the answers to the Warriors cards right now. He's got a quality to deal with Ysera. He's got Aldor to deal with Grom. So he's not in a bad spot. He's got all the answers. He just needs to make sure he's patient wait for the threats to come out and then answer them with, with the correct answers. Yeah, I mean, he's also got to find threats of his own. Like, he needs to find something here that's not going to be too terrible. I on six, though, there's very little the Paladin has on curve that's going to be, like, game-breaking. Yeah, I don't think he needs to ever find or like find initiative himself, though. I feel starve like if he, him? Yeah, if he just waits out long enough, you can easily starve the warrior. They don't have very much card draw. You got land hands. You have, yeah, like, that reminds Tyrion me of, stuff. like, uh, the, the post Nax meta game for Paladins. It became that against Warriors. You just, like, do you like the Aldo here? I do not like the Aldo. I, I no. was just saying I don't like it. Yeah, but... Yeah. No, I mean... <laughs> Gar, are you listening? <laughs> no, but he has no play. Yeah, turn. I know. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. He needs to be patient and then line up his answers with the opponent's threats. Yeah. So I think, I think it's a little rushed, to be honest with you. Like, he would need it right now with Dr. Boom coming out. Like, this is pretty much the Aldo target you were probably looking for. Yeah, that, you would love to outdoor that one, for sure. I mean, you, not can, you can counter with Dr. Boom of your own, and it's going to work, sure. right? It's going to at least work to a great effect, because well, with a weak Belcher... Big game hunter, man. I mean, and he, execute, right. and shield slams. Like, it, it's Control Warrior. You, you can't imagine this 7-7 seven, seven ever sticks. No? Yeah, never. It's like, maybe in your, like, most elegant dream ever, the 7-7 seven, seven sticks. But even then, it's protected by the Belcher. Wow. Yeah. Dropping the truth bombs on me, Firebat. <laughs> I mean, it's just I how left, Control Warrior it. works. Yeah, I know. Like, do you play Grom here just to get yourself like a Boombot chance to like, activate it and hit phase for a lot? That would be insane. Why would you? Well, you can't even kill him. You definitely just want to... Wait, you could. <laughs> if both yeah, Boombots yeah, boom hit phase for four. four. But then well, how do you activate Grom? If that happens. Well, yeah, I mean, one Boombot. Oh, one Boombot hits your Grom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would be insane. That would be absolutely insane. But I guess too late maybe now. if the first Boombot goes to phase for Miss four, Leafle. you try it. Miss Leaf. Potentially. He missed. Yeah. He was one off. There was obviously for right there. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But easiest lethal of his life. Okay. <laughs> well, now from the Paladin's perspective, you got to make sure you hit high value off this equality because now you have this Dr. Boom that's giving you a headache. You got to worry about potentially Grom coming out any minute now. Yeah. And Any uh, minute. You can't really afford to equality a Dr. Boom because you know you need to use your one equality and mid-range Paladin to deal with Ysera. Lay on hands buys your turn. There's eight damage yeah. on the board and you're also uh, able to just get a better equality later when you also get Consecration. Because right now, even if you equality, you're still not able to kill uh, the Dr. Boom unless you juggle. So it's going to be a little clunky. Overall, I still think Lay on hands is the best. And the only way that show gets pushed off of this is if you get super greedy and overextends with yeah. another big legendary. Otherwise, you can play it slow. Uh, yeah. Super JJ picks up BGA that's also a big deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why I think you lay on hands, you try and find either second outdoor, BGH, or the equality consecrate combo, and you hope your opponent overextends their Ysera. You equality consecrate right. it, clean up the board, and uh, good to go from there. I feel like committing any more into the board is Yeah, it's really just helpful. a bad idea overall, because yeah. you know that they have the single best board clear in the game. Exactly. Uh, it's pretty costly. Oh, he runs two equalities. Well, that's okay. really... Now crazy. it just gets interesting. Yeah, but there's still no way for him to kill Boom in this case. Uh, well, he's got the equality and then the juggler. Yeah, he has to like juggle. He can he can juggle quite a bit, right? Yeah, he just esports it. But uh, you're gonna be able to hero power. If like, he places Sarah and gets awakens, this is over. Or nightmares. Uh, yeah, if Sarah awakens, would be 15 damage with the Grom. Yeah. Right. Or so, awakens. You could do it. Why not? 
I mean, yeah. you could even Nightmare, Total like Nightmare or Awakens, because you can yeah. chill slam your own Grom, uh, like if you ever have a bit of so armor left over. How many Ysera cards are there? Five, five, so you have five a 40% lethal. Five. Yeah, 40 two out of five. five, that's not bad odds. Yeah. So yeah. even though it's an overextension, maybe it's worth it to take that two out of five, but you're in such a commanding position, is it worth it to risk it? Well, it looks like he thinks so. Shows yeah. he's going to drop it and get the 40% lethal yeah. in the next e turn. I, e I, don't, I don't mind this play because you're at such a disadvantage in the oh, matchup overall. He gets it. MLG tactics. Yeah, he gets it. So Equality yeah. with the juggle is going to have to do a lot of work here. All he's got are... He's got to play... He can't play the heal bot with this, though, so it's over. Right. Well, he's going well, he to play the Argus. Argus. Yeah, and he's going to oh. stay alive for now. Okay. Nice job. Yeah, there we go. He needs to hit the other juggle. Nice job. Nope, not, oh. not as good a job. Still a good job, because you can kill the slime, and the 7 1 has to run into something. Yeah, sure. Uh, He's alive. Yeah, and alive. Very, very much alive, in fact. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's kind of clunky. Yeah. Well, you could do it now. Why not? Yeah, just get another big. Trade the juggler, get another big threat out on the table. Actually, you Alex yourself, and then you kill the zombie Chow. You're back to 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think you mind healing your opponent for one, since you have 15 burst, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so heal him up, trade the Dr. Boom. I think just getting Alex on the board is another like big threat seems really good. Your opponent's been struggling to deal with this Dr. Boom, and even though they drew three additional cards, they don't always find an answer in those three additional cards. Right. So it's like fairly good odds that Alex sticks, and eventually you're going to run him out of answers, especially since you saw him use an Aldor earlier on a Belcher, which yeah. isn't you, like a primary You target. really just have to dodge extra bit of healing, right? Because right now what you're looking at is a potential lethal if the board gets cleaned up of taunts. But right now, if show like if a heal bot gets dropped and Sho's not able to get a bit more damage, and I think Super JJ is going to stabilize enough yeah. Um, to where he could take the game. Like, all he needs is muster for Battle Quartermaster, and that's usually more than enough to get uh, yeah. to get the job done. Yeah. Super JJ definitely got past the hard part now and is starting to get towards that stabilizing part. And you're talking like a real caster. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> that's with the... Uh... We're on the casting yeah. couch, man. Yeah. Healbot Eldor seems pretty damn good. Easiest Healbot Eldor of his life? Pretty much. <laughs> the question yeah. is, do you ever equality? Like, do you have to kill that no, Ysera so bad? You uh, that Alexstrasza that is so bad? That no, 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 you have the Aldors. You have the answer. You know there's an Iron Beak Owl, though, so that's yeah. something to be thinking about in the back right. of your head, for sure. No. You don't want to call it to your own. I mean, with, with Healbot, you should be okay, right? Like, yeah. there's very little that could go wrong. And using Healbot after the Alexstrasza has been used is huge. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, feels good, man. All right, so there's probably a Brawl in Show's deck, for sure. Uh, if he finds it, there's a... Pretty much no reason not to play it. Then again, with the X... Whoa! Yeah, you, you put the damage on it just in case it gets Owled. Yeah, I like this play a lot. There's so Owl. execute Owl. Actually, does he have almost... He's got Lethal next turn, right? Because he just goes Owl on the uh, the Alex, execute the Zombie Chow, go okay. face for 8, and set up the Grom Nightmare Shield Slam next turn. Well, you're not going to have the armor for yeah, the Shield Slam, sadly. but... Close so enough. 8 plus 15, though, that is... Uh, that's 23. 23, yeah. He's yeah. got exact Lethal if the, the Grom gets enabled somehow. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he's just got to figure out some way to enable the Grom. And it, it doesn't look like Shield Slam can be the card. Owl is a good card, man. Yeah. Owl's a good card. Yeah, I like it. I think you go for it. I don't see any other real play here. Looks that, good to me. Like, eventually you're going to find a Brawl. You're going to find things that can keep cleaning right. up the board. And then sooner or later you'll hit that Grom activator. And then you got it. Tyrion. Oh, yeah, Tyrion. Tyrion. Yeah, now you don't have Owl Dance or Tyrion. That's a problem as well. So yeah, maybe he just enabled it yeah. now. All right. Oh my god. Well, you might be thinking about taking the long-term plan here. Try and exhaust the Paladin. Just trade your big threats for their threats. And just trade resource for resource. <laughs> Save Owl till Tyrion hits. And win with Justicar comes out. Yeah, and then win with Justicar. Take it to Fatigue. Take the long game. Resident Sleeper him to death. You know, that does sound like... That's very show-like. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe he, he can hide this owl, owl like out till next turn and then like activate Alex if he leaves it up. Yeah. Because he's kind of distracted now with the Grom on the field. Yeah, there's a chance that he's going to try to clean up your, your Grom at all costs. Yeah. Uh, but there's only there's very few ways for him to do so, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be Tyrion, and if Tyrion comes up, then uh, you have the Owl for it, but you still don't have the damage output needed to finish off the, the Paladin. Honestly, equality is really good here because Grom is out of the way. Yeah, it looks yeah. like the easiest equality what of are, his life. What are the threats left in, uh, in Show's deck Not now? much, because you know he runs Owl. Yeah, then you yeah, can't yeah. have too many threats. He's yeah. all extra. Do you think so Berengeddon is left? Berengeddon is left. And then like Sylvanas, and then... Sylvanas. That's like it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like the main big ones are out of the way. But you don't... He probably still has BGH. Okay. If he runs double equality, I mean... Uh, Super GG probably still yeah. has BGH left for, for Baron Gaddon. Okay, makes sense. All right, good enough, but I mean, this is helpful. It's just not amazing. 
Yeah, not amazing. Still, easiest shield maiden in your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. So the shield slam uh, though is a like, little tricky. Do you like it? I mean, it makes it so your shield maiden doesn't die on board. So if there is no muster or something to help him trade up, that shield maiden can stick around to help. Oh my the board. god. Okay. Man. Super JJ really desperately wants to find muster for battle. That's a yeah. lot. I mean, yeah. th this deck from Super JJ looks like, I don't know, it, it feels old. Like, I've yeah. seen this before, Double but ages ago. Yeah, this is definitely but, a build that's going to be very good against Warrior. Yeah. But when we were like on the on the couch earlier, he was really like hyping double quartermaster up, like how much he loves it huh. and how everyone misplays with it. Yeah, it worked okay. so well with Trump in ATLC. Well, he, he needs to find muster for battle to really benefit yeah. from it. Yeah, he hasn't drawn a single muster for battle the whole game. His deck's kind of approaching the end here. And then Sho gets the brawl. I mean, you still he still has a really yeah. good situation here because he's able to it's you know use man. consecration to finish off uh, the slime if he wants to pop it, or use uh, consecration to start damaging things for three uh, for two, on top of using the three attack from his minions. So yeah, he's gonna be able to use consecrate here to help him push through the Belcher, like you said. He's, he's cycling the the shredder, but oh man, and before Doomsayer, Paladin's got a big board. What did he get? What what did he get from shredder? Man, if we just take this game back though, like. There was a point there where Sho was just dominating oh, me ahead. And then Argus and came him. down yeah, and it was that, over. That Argus get him, get stopped him. the lethal get and really switched the tides here. I want to hype Geddon here. Oh, oh yeah, Geddon off this slam. Easiest Geddon of your life. <laughs> Geddon, Geddon is pretty good. I know you like my jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. Yeah, it's good. You can feel it in the tone of Firebat. Oh. And muster? No, it's oh, but Super Champion's good as well. Yeah, it starts putting on some more pressure. Just what you needed, and then make another dude get Quartermaster to be more burst damage. Hold it back though. You don't need to play it this turn. Just keep making the hero power. Make sure you hero power every turn, as the Paladin hero power eventually just beats the Warrior hero yeah, power. I wonder if uh, if Super JJ is running a variant of mid range that's running Justicar. Because if you're running double Quartermaster, is there ever a point where you want to stack an Justicar on top of it? To get an extra that is, that is interesting, because usually Justicar is a card that's kind of like better in Control Mirror. Control, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's got it seemingly teched out to beat Agra. Yeah. So, it, he may not be running the Justicar. Sounds like a pretty cool story. <laughs> yeah. It was the easiest story Can, can he life. actually win this game? Yeah, like explosive sheep out of the Shredder, and that's it, GG. Yeah. Not, well, not no, really, he still loses. Yeah. <laughs> Doomsayer out of Shredder, he's going for it. And then, uh, you can get a Geddon. Stabilized maybe later. Yeah, there's no BGH. Yeah, and uh, he doesn't have the answer. Paladin's minions don't usually do very well against Baron Geddon. Yeah, but this is the guy uh, who wants to ruin your life. He's he's just the, the most average two drop in the game. Yeah. And he's just like, yep, I'm no doomsayer, sorry guys. He can't smork like anymore, man. Feels bad, man. Wow, more damage. If, it, if he ever needs more. Yeah, just uh, it was two damage off lethal that turn, right? Or does he have it? Where's the brawl? Uh, he's got 9, 11. Yeah, he's actually got it, I think. Yep. He will yeah. all brawl, the no. all will survive. He's 2 damage off this turn, so next turn he has the, the true silver to try and finish. Yep. And uh, There's no way he loses. BM from Super JJ. Whoa, I, I called it, I whoa, called whoa, it play whoa, whoa. owl first and owl will survive. Called it best call EU. No, no, you have yeah. to owl first, Rick. Even if you owl first though, like... Damn it. He's got another true silver. I just wanted to call it, man. I'm not saying it's the best play, I just wanted to call it. Did you want to call it? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> What's it's, going on here? You wanted to whoa. call it? Holy smokes, he goes down to one. Was that? Yeah, uh, with no muster for battles. Both no respect. No so respect. He's, there's a true silver, two muster for battles to finish the game, potentially. You zombie chow for the BM. Yeah. And then you slap on the true silver champion. All right. So that'll be... Uh, one of the wins for Super JJ is going to be able to replay that Paladin. I don't know if Sho's lineup is great against it, but he's got a mage, so I have to think. I mean, in Sho, I know plays a lot of uh, Freeze Mage, or at least he did yeah. in the past. Yep. Um, and against Paladin, that's pretty much an autopilot. Yeah, it's usually almost. pretty easy. Because yeah. the, the, the Paladin just doesn't apply enough pressure, and you let Freeze Mage do its own thing. And when you let Freeze Mage do its own thing, its thing is to kill you. So <laughs> yeah, it'll stall the board. Like you're yeah. giving them a board to use their stuff on. Yeah. Um, which is usually the way you win against them. Usually is that you don't have anything on the board, and they end up like clogging their hand with useless spells, or you rush them down. Right. You just gotta like, kill them before they. Uh, just... And they control mirror match, right? Okay. Like if you just put down big threats. Like it's one at a time, and they're just starting to feel exhausted by them. Sure. Um, then that's how you end up 
kind of running them out of uh, AoE. Yeah, it does look like it is the Freeze Mage. So yeah, he's got to figure out a way. The Lotheb's a good way to mount a lot of early pressure, as well as Muster for Battle and Knife Juggler. Right. So that's not a bad hand from Super JJ. He may be able to try and sneak out a win here. Yeah, he's got a curve exactly like Secret Paladin without the secrets, and yep. then maybe transition to the late game with the you know the doctor, the usual Doctor Boom stuff. Yeah, of course, Doctor Boom would definitely be super handy to apply pressure as fast as possible. Turn because, seven looks fast. I guess Freeze yeah. Mage. It feels like that's the beginning of the game. Like the Paladin just doesn't have any burst damage, right. so like. They eventually get out to a point where Freeze Mage can then use its mana to just freeze the board every turn and then get a bunch of cards in their hand, get an Emperor down, make infinite fireballs. And infinite fireballs is pretty hard to beat. Yeah. <laughs> the best part is the winner of those two is going to play against Frodan. Yeah, and what if Frodan just takes it, like completely? Yeah, I mean, he's playing well. There's definitely a chance that he can do it. But. Uh, he seemed a little uh, jaded after this. He was like, oh my god, my eSports is losing legitimacy. <laughs> like, Blizzard, please fix. Yeah, no. so. he, he did say that. Did he say he that? Something along those lines. He wow. said, Blizzard, I hope you're watching. Oh, shots fired, huh? Yeah. Well, is he firing shots at us or Blizzard, really, I'm not by sure. that? Like, who, like who's, who's the idiot? Right? Yeah. The like, guy's playing the card game? Yeah, yeah. Or the, or the people making it. Like, <laughs> right. really? Frodan might have been just firing shots at us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty meta. I, I don't put it past Frodan. Yeah, that's like a next level insult puzzle. Like, yeah. wow, you got a like, Rubik's Cube to figure out who he's insulting. Yeah. That was confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, back I, to the like game. When Frodan talked, I just looked at him for slightly 30 seconds trying to understand what came out of his mouth. Like, it took me a while to piece all the words together. Yeah, well, he's like... He's pretty cryptic. He is definitely a rapper. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, uh, yeah, Arcane Intellect, one of the best cards for Freeze Mage to get early on in the game. Just really help you draw more cards, which allows you to draw cards that draw cards, and then you just have some drawception going on. So I, I honestly, I, I like always the ice block more. Developing secrets is um, first is better than drawing cards. What? Because you have a um, a chance, chance that, to not draw the second ice block, and then you're stuck yeah, not playing yeah. it. Oh, because you, you like the scientist more, not the ice no, block more. To, to trade the scientist because he will most likely kill it with master for battle okay. and play the ice block first. Then he gets ice barrier as well. Guaranteed. So he cycles out okay. ice barrier and then he draws cards. I can understand that line as well. Yeah, it's like you've got a 33% chance to get screwed if you don't. Yeah, yeah he gets double screwed. But like if this this is ice block, he can't yeah, play yeah. his then ice block. Yeah, then he can't block. play his ice block. And when he draws first, he can draw more secrets. Yeah. So it's really, really better to develop the secret first. Well, I mean, it's just like it's so low odds that you even draw the secret though, and you have in favor odds of getting the barrier though. Yeah. But if he gets ice block, you're uh, you can't play your ice block from hand. Sure. Uh, so apparently uh, we're going to be talking about turn three for another seven turns. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, is that, those are the small nuances in Hearthstone know, that decide probably, games, man. I know, man. That's the, that's the part of Hearthstone I love, is right. that there's little, like, tricky decisions that people don't pay attention to that decide an entire match. Yeah, yeah. it's like the, that coin aspirant versus not coin aspirant. Yeah, yeah, those sort of decisions that are, like, the whole game, in a nutshell. Yeah. If you want to sum it up, like, sometimes one turn decides what Hearthstone does. Yeah. Um, it's so, what Merlock thing. does he have? What Merlock does he have? Bet, 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 quick, quick, quick. Too late. Oh! oh! Murloc, no way! Dude, oh. How much damage could he possibly do next turn by just like hero powering and getting the right Murloc? Like, is what, what's the most? Double, uh, double War Leader. Double War Leader? Is that more than double Murkai? Well, it's giving you four attack. Murkai is four, four. Yeah, I guess. Uh, it's the same thing, huh? Yeah, it's the same damage because they both okay. have four, but over time, like you start with War Leaders, then you get double Murkai, right, yeah, yeah, then yeah, yeah. you're stacking. You build up to it, yeah. Right. Although, I think at that point. Well, double War Leaders is still it's, better. Double War Leader is better because they survive Flame Strike. Yeah. All right. But now, what's your play? I'm, I'm like, shaking Are you Frostbolt, like Frostbolt Pink, Frostbolt Ice Lens? Are you just like in panic mode? It, he is going to take it easy, just try and wait out for this flame strike. Oh man, if War he gets leader, the buff Murloc, yeah. He has Lothab. He can lock down this board. Because it's before turn 8. So now, yeah. you have to get Lothab down before turn 8 because then the Freeze Mage player, if it happens on turn 8, is allowed to play Frost Nova and just stall down the board. But right, 8 case, is the only time where they can yeah. play Ice Block or Nova to actually stay alive. Yeah, and see there, the Nova cannot be played, so you can't stop these Murlocs. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop them! Yeah. Oh, wow, the double Doomsayer. No, well, just one Doomsayer for sure, just to mitigate seven damage. Um, uh, he's getting popped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. And he might get, like, really popped, depending on what comes out of these Murlocs. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, right now, what uh, Super JJ can't do is open up the board for two Murlocs. He's only got a 1-1. One -one. So it'll yeah. depend on what show decides to do. But I think overall, you kind of... You, you spot that you can't let him get... Uh, two additional minions from the Murloc Knight. 
no matter what you do. So you wouldn't ping this 1-1. One, one. Makes sense. It's a heads-up decision. But he's got to try and figure out a way not to get popped. And he's thinking maybe he can use Frostbolt to not get popped here. Yeah. That's the most important priority, of course, is just not getting popped. And uh, the, 11 the, damage. Yeah. 12, 13. One War Leader is like the best you can get because you're adding 4 damage and then you can also True Silver on the back of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So War Leader True Silver would be a pop or Blue Gill Warrior or. Blue Gill Warrior, would it be a pop? Yeah, Blue Gill yeah, Warrior. It's right. just two, it's more two, damage, two more damage. So you, need. you need War Leader, Blue Gill Warrior, Grimscale Oracle, or, or the. Murkai. Murkai. So that's 4 out of 8. 50% yeah. chance that you can pop them with just Hero Power. The new Murlocs are not in yet. They're going to be coming out. Yeah, yeah, the they're not ones. in yet. So it's still only 8 Murlocs, so it's a 50 50. I'd do it. Yeah, I'd take a 50 50. I mean, what else? Are you going to play more minions on a turn where you're about to get 50 50 down? to pop a freeze mage? That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, this is a matchup you're not supposed to be winning. And he loses oh, it. Oh, he misses the 50 50. That's pretty sick. Maybe it's actually there just off board because he's actually at the 8th oh, yeah. minion. <laughs> yeah. We'll never know. They summoned that. in the wrong order. Never lucky. Yeah. This guy wanted to stomp some puddles, but he's not going to get to. All right. All right, so well, assuming show goes, you know, Nova Doomsayer. Um, it's and, still awkward for him. Yeah, exactly, because there is a two drop, you know, left over. Uh, and it's also not solving the issue of if you Alex Straza, you have to kind of do it on yourself right now, because doing it on the opponent, if since they're popping your block, you're still dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. To my different Iceland's fans, yeah, please. exactly. Like, the Nova just get consecrated. That feels really bad. And it helps against equality because, like, you'd need a quality consecrate then to kill the Doomsayer. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to use anything on board or a weapon. Or, like, even Knife Juggler down. But he, if he qualities, I think you're okay with it. If only because you can, can flame strike can the board you, after. Can you come back as a freeze mage when you get poked like this? Sometimes. It's very rare, though. It's very rare. Very rare. It's definitely, like, it's in a tricky spot. Sometimes you can get, like, the second ice block up and then freeze a lot and then Alex and then have enough burn to go in one go if they don't have any heals. It's so like right now with the burn in hand though, he's only yes. got six. So uh, he's got thirteen. He's got thirteen. So it's he's not too far, but the true server champion, yeah. like it has to attack like before. If it attacks after, then you've got mm -hmm. even more uh, ground to cover with those same spells. And he doesn't have like the ability to chain freezes, so he's gonna need to find a good draw here. Okay, so he's he's gonna let himself get popped. Um, that's the intention. Which means he's going to play Alex defensively, and he's banking on that maybe to come back. Yeah, he's hoping that this Doomsdayer sticks, and equality is bad news bears for him. Yeah, it's like the, the, the most... Yeah. Yes, Doomsdayer yeah. pops the block. Doesn't get better than this, and you keep the True Silver for later when yeah. you need to heal after something like Alex Trouble. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a marginal upside, but it's definitely something Dude. to consider. Emperor Thorson does not do much for him here. Yeah. Blizzard, not quite enough. What he really needed here was the ability to freeze the board and then equip Ice Block again. Doomsayer and then have it stick. Shredder barrier. needs to be or Ice Barrier. Yeah, he just needed like one. Oh, he needs to somehow Expl find an opening. Explosive Sheep or Unstable Ghoul out of the Shredder or Doomsayer. Doomsayer. Three outs. There you go. So you Frost Bolted and then you're kind of uh, alive, but the weapon will still kill you. So you have to Ice Line his face after. Sure. Huh. What is Alex Straza? Most expensive. Yeah. He's, he's not dead yet, except for those two jugglers. Yeah, that are going to kill him. Yeah, they're going to kill him. No, <laughs> he's like, no he's way like, to live. like almost alive. Yeah, he's not dead, but he's dead. Yeah, yeah, that was a good sentence. Oh, man. And Mid all range of sudden, Paladin. Of all things. Of all things. Bigs of Freeze Mage. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I've seen much of that in the past. Yeah, it's been a thing like in the Asian scenes for a while. Like a lot of them really liked the mid-range Paladin. We saw a little bit of it at, at BlizzCon, but mainly in the Asian qualifiers, like almost every player had mid-range Paladin. Really? Yeah, for those kind of Asian qualifiers. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, because I feel like it's better than Secret. Uh, like in the mirror match, let's say if okay. I want to go, yeah, yeah. If, if I want to choose like one Paladin to play on the ladder right now, I wouldn't go for Secret for the okay. most part. Um, but I think it kind of varies, just because if there's a higher representation of Secret, you're better off playing mid range. Yeah. Well, it's doing a lot of work right here, and I think mid range Paladin's pretty good against Druid. It it does really well, especially because yeah. you have the the OP curve of the Secret Paladin. And then uh, just better late game. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you're able to actually threaten them as opposed to just run out of steam. Sure, sure. And suddenly, JJ is ahead. 2-1. Yeah, 2-1. Mid-range Paladin. OP, man. <laughs> Easiest zombie chow of his life? Easiest zombie chow of his <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. JJ's looking uh, pretty tense. Yeah, he looks oh, he's, good. he's rubbing his I mean, non-existent beard. It feels <laughs> so good when you have the zombie chow turn one, you go first. Yeah. With any deck. It feels good when you got that wild growth as Druid, too. Yeah. Or with any deck. 
Like, wow, that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> you guys like, well, I'm playing Mage, uh, Spellslinger. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and still a sick curve, though. The Cog Hammer could give you a little bit more mileage as well out of this, uh, these minions if you have to remove something with them. Sure. And you probably will have to. Druid's an honest deck. Really fights for the board a lot and then becomes dishonest and combos you in the face. Yeah. And the worst part is when, when they become dishonest while they have a minion on the board, you're not taking 14, like 26. Yeah. You're taking a ridiculous amount. It's fun and interactive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. So what do you do here? You like Shade? You like Keeper? I like Shade, Coin, Wrath. Yeah? I don't like. I don't. I don't like. Shade Nature, wrath really. and then uh, sure. low tip. Yeah, shade wrath and then low tip. I can get behind that. That looks like a pretty good way. So yeah, shade then coin wrath on the zombie child is like the most defensive line possible. But um, uh, really, you just need to get the board back as druid. Right. And I think on your turn, you can always pull off something pretty decent with the keeper of the grove. Like if you don't have to deal with Tyrion immediately, like that's not the biggest threat right now. Yeah. And you have a turn five follow up with the low tip. Exactly. So just, it, it makes sense to use the coin here. See if you can show it. Uh, oh, about. Okay. he's got he's gonna kill Zombie Shaw and Curve with the Keeper next turn. Okay. With the hero power to kill the other one one. Yeah. Yes. He's going for the Cog Hammer is gonna earlier. punish him. I think yeah. if uh, Cog Hammer Jager or Shredder it. would be able to punish him like a lot here. Yeah. So he's that hoping his opponent misses his curve. Line. He just find Murloc Knight. Oh my Ooh, god. Yeah, he did find oh, Murloc man. Knight. Murloc Knight uncontested. Sometimes a four drop. More often a six drop. Oh, that's a great card here. That's gonna allow him to kill the Murloc Knight. Yeah, and a one one. It does suck, but you have to. Yeah, <laughs> is what you got to do. It's not Man, like the best case in the if world. If he couldn't have killed it, he would yeah. have curved out perfectly the call hammer plus your power. Yeah, that would have been disgusting. That That's why you play disgusting. Saboteur. Yeah, it looks like he's going for Double the uh, Force of Nature instead. I I could see that Force of yeah. Nature looks pretty appealing, just because you can curve a double shade on the following turn. Um, yeah, like if you dodge Consecration, you're in a great spot. I can dig that. <laughs> you can dig it. You can Does, if he if, can if he goes that. for the double shade next turn, he will get pretty punished. Yeah, that that will not go well for him. The shades will be hiding, but not hiding from consecrate. Wow, that was deep. Looks like <laughs> you may yeah, be hidden. I will happen. find you. <laughs> he's going for the wall. Wow, and then he has the boom afterwards. Yeah, he's wow. got the perfect curve, the removal curve against double shade. Um, oh, oh that, that might incentivize him to play that instead. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. Him. Card. Saved him. Oh, you know what? Yeah. We found uh, the uh, like the normal Doctor Six. I don't yeah. realize it's just not a great tempo play. It's just a scary play. Yeah, it definitely is scary, especially in Druid because they can do some crazy stuff with Emperor effect. Cog Hammer though will take this out. Mm -hmm. um, we'll let Lothab take care of this, and you keep the five five. And that's a weapon. really big deal. And I hear it's huge, yeah. 5-5 five, five and a 1-1 one, one still. You basically just removed your opponent's board, gave yourself a Cog Hammer, and you still have the same board. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, the, the Druid does get to curve in a little higher. Like, if he's got an A-drop, he could play it technically. Uh, wow. Through the Emperor. Can play a lot of stuff. I mean, you could yeah. go Lothab, Shade, Innervate, Shade, so they're out of range of that's, Consecration, yeah. guaranteed. That's, I, that's, I like that play a lot. It's the only time you'll be able to protect them, ever. That's pretty good. Yeah, but that play is it's also here for... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. He wants oh. to enter the conversation. Yeah. Maybe. You never get a break. And they, uh, the broom just like always interrupts you. Yeah. It just ruins all the fun. Yeah. You it's may like be hidden much. and you may be protected, but I will find you. Yeah. Like there's nothing to do. <laughs> and now the boom bots plus the consecrate kills the shades. It's just a nightmare for these shades. Yeah. They've been trying the whole game not to die. They haven't, even, like, they haven't tried too much. Like, granted, they've been kind of hiding. Yeah, in real, the hand. In the hand. Like super hiding. Right. Like next level stealth. Yeah. But... With Dr. Boom, you just can't run away. You just can't run. <laughs> like Every game I see on ladder, I'm like, please, no Boom. Nope, there it is. There it is. All right. All right, he's putting on the heat right now. Yep. So he's just BJ's top deck. That, that would do a lot of work. <laughs> oh, not quite BGH, Whoa, but Savage wait, Roar is pretty powerful. You're going to claw Savage Roar. There's no way it's it doesn't. No, I mean, it doesn't no. clear anything, but soon enough, it's got to... Like, enough. what if you go... You have to like, you trade with your Lothab, right? And then you just leave the shades, stay there, mm -hmm. and you don't deal with the boom bots, okay. right? Well, you're kind of afraid of dying. But, I mean, what's your... What's your All right, so... So you just trade the Druid of the Clan and the Shade into the boom? Yeah, you just yeah, have the Shroud, yeah. clear the boom, and clear with yeah. your Shade the uh, Lothab. Yeah. That seems pretty good. Yeah. You trade Lothab and the This shade. looks very good. It's the best he's gonna get. Yeah, you have to break up the combo pieces. And you kill the hero sad, but Oh my god. He's pushing a lot of face damage and you've finally taken back the board from the Paladin's clutches. He's taking some deeps. Yeah. Lots of deeps. If he uh, top decks a lore, this might be a chance. A chance. The Zumbat's coming in for those shades. But Argus is 
So sick as well. Yeah, I mean, just like, look at the hand size right now. We have the... Uh, That's the problem with running out. face. Would not even be wrong. Yeah. Wouldn't mind it. Like, is also P. The Druid is completely out of cards now. He has only a Keeper of the Grove to reload the board. Now Aspirin is no help. He was really looking for an Ancient wah, wah. of Lore there. Or maybe even War. Yeah. You'd have to absolutely find... Uh, your seven drops. You've yeah. got nothing else in the deck really that can put on any pressure. Yeah, and Paladin still has tons of gas left in the tank. Yeah, I mean, with Lay on Hands, there's no way he runs out of cards. Yeah. So essentially, right now, we're going through the motions, and Show just got to draw completely one obliterated by no. Midrange. Never mind. He has to draw one damage, and the Boombot has to go phase. Phase for four, easy mode. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, he, he's still in a great spot, the Paladin player. He's able to put up a giant wall of taunts here and have heals behind it. And he's even got a quality. I mean, the Drew's on three health with no way to push yeah. through. Like, it's no zero way. ways. Mid-range Paladin. Oh, there's there's a way. Mm -hmm. Yep, he goes up to four health. Right? You can get through. No, and because one he off. styles the Shredder, yeah. he also can't even Hail Mary it. see what you're seeing. I, he's, he's one off from breaking the Belcher. For please some reason, I thought three five. five. Please explain me. You know what it is. Yeah. Please explain he was on play. one health, basically, at the I end of the turn. Because he could swipe and trade. Yeah, 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 it doesn't die, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, he's going to be on one health. <laughs> one. Yeah, the Belcher's at one health. Doesn't yeah. help. Yeah. It doesn't help. Yeah, he was dead. I was looking optimistically. Yo. No, you swipe the Shredder and you kill the Belcher. You can't kill the Belcher. You can't kill the Belcher, bro. He has He's, six well, you, have, you, have two, you can't. You have two two drops. It's all over, man. And he has got six, six You're right. You're right. Yeah. He got Argus. It, it, see, you're doing what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. you, you just can't. Yeah. All right. That's right. Super JJ has got, uh, got the interview coming. I can't believe uh, all right. we didn't realize, but um, you have to take the mic in the first place, like step yep. one. And now on for the awkward questions. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about Midrange Pally just taking over the world? Dude, this deck is good, right? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Everybody tells okay, me come on. Put, put, put the Everybody is telling me it's like a mistake to bring it, but I love it. <laughs> it's a it's a honest deck. <laughs> right. It's very honest. That's what Firebat was saying. Like Drew's yeah. an honest deck, Midrange Pally is kind of an honest deck. Uh, but it's got the ability to do like it does really well against Druid overall. If you dodge the swipes, like yeah, and Control Warrior, which is a huge deck right now. Control Warrior has been in like most people's lineups. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it doesn't have like the huge swing cards like the most decks, like no mid talk to six or something. But it, it's like, um, it has just overall solid um, cards included, um, which have like a high impact on the game. So it's fine, you just have to play to your outs. Yeah, yeah. so uh, you're going to be facing off against Frodan next. Oh, right? yeah, you you will be, be facing up against Frodan. Now, he crushed Ty's 3 0. Yeah. Right? So keep that in mind. I, I feel like you have mid range Bally, so he's got Secret Paladin. You should, you know, you technically have the advantage there. Yeah. Uh, but anything can happen with that deck. So, uh, like, do you feel like you're going to fall down to Frodan? He's going to make the round of 16 as well? Um, or do you think you're going to, like, force him to play a third match afterwards? Uh, I mean. I mean, Secret Paladin is maybe going to be hard, we will see. I'm excited to play against Frodan. Yeah, like, I can imagine. It's pretty It's going to be fun. Yeah. So any more questions, guys? Or? Uh, what do you think about the new uh, League of Explorers Paladin card, the 3-4? Uh, the oh, you mean like the best card out of the set? Yeah. yeah the, you think it's the best card of the set? Yeah, yeah it's I, really I good. Totally. Wow. Uh, that and the one drop okay. from Shaman. Okay. Yeah. So you would put that in. Can you actually play that card in the round of 16 or no? Yeah. You can? Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to put that in the mid-range Paladin? Oh, uh, sure. Oh. <laughs> there, there we go. The information has been given away. What did you do? You ruined everything. You just told him your game plan. It, was, oh, it wasn't I'm an attempt your, to scout you. Yeah, I'm your opponent if you advance. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, about that. That's really shady tactics, ah, but I guess uh, that's Hearthstone. Yeah. Yeah, Firebat's uh, pretty mean. That being said, thanks for uh, you know entertaining us with mid-range Bally. It's not a yeah. deck that I see very often, so it's kind of nice to see it win and maybe crush even the opponents. Thanks but for we'll having me. We'll see you for the next match uh, against Frodan. It's going to be pretty entertaining at the very least. Uh, so, yeah, good luck. Okay, thank Enjoy you. Jeff. Drop the mic. So we'll be going for a short break, guys, before we cast the winner's match, I think should be up after this, and uh, the loser's match as well will happen. And we'll see exactly who's able to advance to the playoffs. It's uh, it's it's pretty interesting just to think that Frodan went three over Tice, and if he beats Super JJ, I think uh, something in this world will have to just compensate. Like, too much wrong. What? There's too much wrong with this world. It's all right, man. Midrange Paladin's good. Yeah. Do you think it's going to win? It has to win. 
I think I think it's a really smart choice. Yeah. I think it was really well done by him. The, just by the sheer amount of warriors in general, is just makes it so strong. Yeah, you starve them with one one. Yeah. Kind of you can deal. you win that matchup so consistently that it's just a really strong choice in the yeah the meta game. All right, so uh, we'll be back in uh, five minutes technically. So yeah, stay tuned. See Story Cup Four is coming back right after this.